Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Thank you very much for joining us today. And just in case we run out of time and I don't get to say it later, I hope everybody has a good Easter weekend. Now, a lot of you are tuning in today expecting the Attorney General to be here. However, he had some scheduling conflicts and could only have been here for 45 minutes today, so instead we rescheduled him for Tuesday's show. So please hold on to your comments and questions until then. Today, instead, we have two people with us who... God bless them, have come at a moment's notice. John Twig and Mike Gagan join us, and I'm really glad they do because there's a lot to talk about with the B.C. legislature. We had a budget that was tabled. It hasn't received adequate coverage. Even we didn't do a show following the budget, but you should be aware. The real deficit is actually about $949 million. That's a lot of money. And our debt, which is like our mortgage, has already gone up to almost $32 billion dollars and to give you some idea about that it was at 18 billion in 1991 when the NDP took power so a lot of fiscal concerns a lot of issues to talk about an economy in trouble and many people worried about losing their jobs now where I have a concern and this is what I'm going to complain about today I'm upset about the media and I'm upset about the way that there's been coverage of the legislature and it's no different this year as it ha than it has been in the past but when I can't pick up a newspaper and read about some of the issues being debated when all I read about is Paul Reitzma I don't feel like I'm being properly served by the media I want to find out more about what's going on in the legislature I don't want to have to sit and listen to every minute of debate in the house which is almost what you have to do now so in my opinion the media are not doing their job and I'd like to hear your opinion on this and other subjects. The Taiyabchi phone lines are now open. From Victoria, call 383-6036 or toll free at 1-888-383-6036. Call now. Hudson Mack grumbling his way out of the studio. <laughs> we have two people with us today. And, and, and what we'd like to hear too, if you're at home right now, and there are concerns that you think the government should address, whether it's legal aid, whether it's the Ministry of Children and Families, health care, the doctor's action. I mean, there's, there's so many issues that are the responsibility of the provincial government, including job losses. We'd like to hear from you, and uh, we'd like to welcome our two guests, John Twig and Mike Gagan. Thanks for coming back, guys. Uh, Thank you. you. <laughs> it's nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, you guys don't have to agree with me on my uh, opinion about the media. You had a very, very hard-hitting column Thank in your you. last column about the legislature. Actually, I had three. Three. Well, I haven't gone through all of them. I certainly see that you said the fiscal mess of the government has been obscured by the rights of scandal. I think yep. you're absolutely right. Yep. What do you think about things so far? Uh, the legislature or the rights of scandal? Both. Whatever. Um, well, I'm disappointed. Uh, there was an interim supply vote on the 31st. That's uh, Tuesday. Now, interim supplies where the government has to get approval spending authority in before the budget is debated in detail so usually they ask for three months this year they asked for three months that's five billion dollars okay a lot of money now how many questions did the opposition ask about that five billion dollars well now this is one where if None. they kept it go yeah not a single not word. a single question and your husband Gordon Wilson apparently he's an MLA of course for anybody who doesn't know <laughs> um, he wanted to speak in that and he was down the hall in his office and by the time he got to the, le the legislature, they had cut off debate. Yeah, uh, he was quite hopping mad even by the end of the he day. He should have been, one. and he should have been in the House too. But people should be aware, and, and you can't be there all the time, but you're right, I mean, when yeah, something thing like that. like that, five billion bucks, I'm sorry. And people <laughs> should be aware that that five billion dollars, if the government didn't receive authority by midnight, March 31st, That's it was correct. introduced the morning of March 31st, yep. if it hadn't received authority, they'd be out of the authority to spend money. Yep. And the Liberals didn't That actually really surprises down. me because I, I know when I worked in opposition with the NDP, um, you know, going after interim supply was one of our standard things, yep. was to, yep. you know, hold the government up, you know, bring it as close to midnight and have the debate go right to 11.59 p.m. Yep. Right. and then pass it. So right. it I, re I remember me. one year where it went around to 8 a.m. the next morning. Well, and there's no reason not to. When you've got the doctors taking action, you've got lawyers withdrawing well, out of exactly. legal aid, you've got um, the BC Hydro selling some Fast of their Fast ferries overrun. Fast ferries overrun. The gaming revenue debate. Right, the charity problems that uh, are... Okay. The, the, the $8 million asterisk, the Skeena Cellulose. These, the, the Liberals... The $8 you know, million to their dollar credit, asterisk? Been, yeah, What's, we'll get to that. Okay, honey, <laughs> million, all right. Um, the Liberals have been criticizing the budget pretty hard, and, mm -hmm. and so they should. Mm -hmm. But what do they do? The one moment that they've got the hammer on the government, they, as I wrote in my newsletter, they folded like a cheap card table. Yeah. Well, I was, I was pleased to see that today the Liberals were taking the government to task over the new policy on charity. Yeah. Mike, as somebody who used to be uh, a government MA, mm -hmm. how can an NDP government be taking away 
uh, access to charitable revenue from the charities, from the volunteer organizations. Well, I can tell you that uh, when I was in government uh, and they were looking at setting up a for-profit casino in Vancouver, it was something that, that was deeply divisive within government, within cabinet. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure there are people within caucus who are troubled by this. But they're not speaking But I think, I think what it comes down to is, and I was thinking about this on the way in, is that, you know, here's a government that has been unable to balance its budget. And the one area where... You know, I, I see gambling uh, as a, essentially voluntary taxation, mm -hmm. and here's the one area where the public is actually willing to give money to government in the hopes that you know someday they'll win thousands or right. millions of dollars. And so I think I think the government is simply doing this as a, uh, in order to try and balance their books right. and to create union jobs. And that's something that we and we didn't get to talk about the home care worker unionization. Oh last yeah. Time. Now I'm about to take a call. For those of you trying to get through, please be patient because a lot of the lines are ringing at once. We'll take a call and we'll develop some of those sure. union jobs themes and, and what's going on. First, let's talk to Barry in Victoria. Hi, Hi good Barry. Good afternoon. Yeah. Go Hi. Ahead. Um, I'd just like to know why it seems to be the House, of, the house here in BC, mm -hmm. they do nothing. They work for maybe four months of the year and sit down and debate about basically no topics that concern anybody in BC but their own political pockets. Right. Okay, well, that's that. a, a good question. Actually, you, you can, can answer, answer that. We yeah, could all I've answer that. My answer is <laughs> about an hour long. Go ahead. Goes back to the. WAC men at Socrates and actually probably all the way back to the early days of the legislatures in BC where there's such a pressure to reduce accountability and that's been inherited. The Socrates of Bill Bennett's era did not want tough questions asked and sad to say the Harcourt Clark New Democrats, I now call them the Clarkocrats, they've inherited the Bill van der Zam style of government which is to minimize accountability again. And but that's it what's works happening. against the people's interests. Well, obviously. of course. So but you know, they call them the New Democratic Party, but really they're the non-democratic party. <laughs> Well, why doesn't the Liberal opposition make more noise uh, about the fact there's no fall session? According to Dan Miller, who's a deputy <coughs> premier, and I saw him at a reception, he said the government wanted to bring the House back in early. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. He mm -hmm. claims that the Liberals didn't want uh, to come back I early. I don't know why the Liberals didn't want it, because it would have run their budget up, and over they would have had their caucus budget go over, mm -hmm. and, you know. <laughs> So it's so they money. better to not sit. And there's also the cynical game played where parties that, you know, right now the Liberals are leading massively in the polls. They think they're going to be the next government after after the next election. So they don't want to be pressuring for things like this because then that leaves them in a situation where they ha they are, end up being more accountable when they're government. Yeah. Okay. Well, yep. that's yes, good point. Uh, ridiculous. Donna in Victoria, go ahead, please. Donna? Oh, Hi. yeah. Um, in the budget they've allotted so much money towards health care they're mm -hmm. so worried about the doctors um, but one problem being is that they've raised the pharmacare deductible from six hundred to eight hundred dollars wow. per calendar year right and there's low-income people out there that are not on welfare and very often we have people coming in saying i'm sorry but we can't afford these drugs and i myself have done that wow. um, and it's really it's really annoying to see um, you know, you've got people on welfare that come in and they say, I need this, I need this, I need this, and you give them to them. Right. Um, but right. you've got low-income people who have kids and husbands at home and, and themselves who are making, you know, $20,000, $25,000 a year. Right. Um, and there's no way that they can pay for some of these drugs. Wow, I didn't realize that they'd read. Thank you for that call. Yeah, and well, that, see, that was one of the things that was that, that made people so cynical about the budget. There was this great trumpeting of every little incremental tax reduction. Like they talked about an 11 percent decrease for small business, and people are going, "Wait a sec, the small business income tax rate is nine percent." But right. then it was actually a one percent cut yeah. factored in over two years. So oh. they would do all this spinning, but then they forgot to mention, "Oh, we're jacking up the the deductible for to eight hundred for pharmacare to eight hundred dollars." Right. And so that's what makes people so cynical right. about politics and this province is the basic lack of honesty. Right. Be upfront yeah. with people. Tell them what you're doing. Stop. You know, they're so enamored with spin control. Yeah. The, the people are, are, are just fed up. And, and, and this issue, I mean, the, the government, to its credit, has tried to do some things to ease the tax burden for the, the working poor and, okay. and, and lower and, and get some additional benefits. benefits to them. But, I mean, this, but this is, is something... But this is going to hit people This is going to hit people hard, okay. and it's a, rev it's a revenue grab. And we do have to take a break. Uh, so much for universal health care. We'll be back with more of your calls and comments about provincial government in British Columbia and the latest budget after the break. Remember me. I'm the baking soda that used to absorb fridge odors. Onion power. 
Food's going to get spoiled if a new box doesn't show up soon. Uh oh You foods will keep your smells to yourselves. Yay! Isn't it time to change your arm and hammer? Since 1939, we've been searching for the perfect blends for our concentrated 100% juices. Orange and cauliflower. Corn. Parsnip. Are you guys aliens? How about Swiss cheese? No, no, no. Oh, we need a break. Orange and peach. Orange, grape, and strawberry. New orange, peach, and orange, grape, strawberry. 100% juice, 100% Old South. You guys are geniuses. <laughs> now, buy Old South and save on Gardena products. Details in your local grocery store. In the news, excitement is growing over the new brig technology announced by Midas. When tested on yellow cabs in San Francisco, these new carbon metallic brake pads lasted 29% longer than ordinary brake pads. Cab owners are delighted. Since they'll be spending less on brake repairs, they can now afford to spruce up their fleets. New performance friction carbon metallic brake pads, now at Midas. You'll be pleased to learn that at Van City, the convenience of having complete ATM access to your money has multiplied. In fact, we now have over 500 of the blooming things. But the real beauty is that with us, there's no surcharge for using any one of them. For information and locations, call us today. Van City, it's right here. It's here where we're willing to fight for our dreams. All right, now just imagine. This is you. You're floating down in all your glory. It's here. Veronica's Closet, tonight at 9.30. And just before we go back to the phones, and as I say, if you're trying to get through, please let it ring, because we'll get to you as soon as we can. Uh, the Central Credit Union has said there's an 80% chance we're heading into a recession. Yeah. Now, I was talking to a couple of realtors the other day who said, gosh, you know, if we could just stop talking about the bad news, maybe the economy could recover. Mm -hmm. And yet the reality is there. I mean, the, the growth has slowed. Uh, and they say that uh, if, if there's a recession, that'll show two consecutive quarters of declining economic growth. Now... If I put that to the provincial government, they would tell me everything is wonderful and coming up roses. Yeah, that's what they said in the budget, too. They picked the most positive aspects of the economic forecast they can look at. Now, you know, what's a recession? Two consecutive quarters of, you know, flat or negative growth. Uh, the BC economy is not in the tank. It's, it's slumping. It should be a lot better. It should be a lot better. Yeah, but uh, to some degree, the, the realtors are right when they say, gee, you know, we shouldn't talk so much about negative things. It's depressing. Uh, we didn't have a recession when the rest of the country did. So, you know, uh, on a, maybe a per capita basis or something, our economy is still, uh, you know, it's, it's, so it's not sick, it's, but it's some, not well. It, it could it's be It's anemic. Better. Yeah, anemic. <laughs> I'm going to be a little provocative here. Right. I think what's going on also is the business community in this province and the people who invest, I think there's a bit of an unofficial capital strike going oh, on. They're unhappy with this government. They're unhappy with the policies yeah. of this government. And they're saying, hey, we're going to wait till after the next election and see if we have a more business-friendly government in power. That's yep. uh, well, yep. and they have the power yep. to do yep. that. Yep. Okay, yep. now it's Trish in Langley. Hi, Trish. Hi, Judy. Hi, go ahead. Hi, um, a comment about the local news media on the mainland here, all the way from um, the North Shore News to Hope, I think. Right. They're all interconnected, and you mentioned spin doctoring, or your guest, one of your guests mentioned spin right. doctoring. Right. When the outbreaks of the flesh-eating disease were, there was a lot of them, five in Langley last year. Right. At the same time, all of a sudden, these reports were in the local newspaper of how good a job the hospital's doing. <laughs> and I, you just can't believe it, that they're all, it seems like a monopoly. Right. And oh, okay. with them... Oh, yeah. one more point. Yeah. With um, our local MLA, Rich Coleman, being on recall, and then the recall didn't work, mm -hmm. the same day as that rightsmo was um, caught in the lie, there was an ad from Lynn Stevens and Rich Coleman, you know, saying how the NDP is lying in their legislation. It just, you know, it's throwing name calling of lies back and forth isn't doing our government any good. Okay, well, thanks for that. And it's interesting because that Rich Coleman recall received almost no attention, but it was well, very. It didn't uh, deserve to. Well, it depends. People, a lot of people I talked to in Langley were upset that the issue didn't receive the issue of the development 
and, mm -hmm. and the mayor and the, all the little political stuff. The media chains in, she says, the North Shore to the Fraser Valley. It's true. There are two or three main chains of community newspapers. They do compete. Uh, we do you take know, wire feed. And, yeah, and, and we're, we're supposedly going to get a new daily newspaper from Southern Mark. You know, from Conrad I'm Black. That. <laughs> we get a bit of competition. The lies thing, though. Uh, the, she mentioned the NDP lying. You know, here we are. We're going after Ritzma for writing a few phony letters, fake letters. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't even impersonate re real people, we don't think. Maybe one or two. <laughs> but So that's not criminal. But you look at the deceit in the budget that the NDP put in. Like right. several consecutive years now, fudget budgets. Uh, Troy Lanigan with the BC Taxpayers Federation, you know, he's using the word deceptive in the headline on his news release on right, it. Right, right. So well, which I think is worse? it works both ways, though, too, because we had Kevin Kruger, the liberal critic, yeah. who went and lobbied the minister of his portfolio for a kickback to a oh, political friend. Year. Okay, I know, but what I'm saying is that didn't receive any attention. That didn't receive yeah. a lot of press. I, I, I think the other the, the other point the caller was making though is uh, is the general sense out here is we're not well served by this government and we're not well served by this opposition. Yeah, here, here. I, and I think you know, and I think that's reflected in in the poll results. Well, it has uh, to be issue, it should yeah. be issue based um, focus. I and would the leadership hope. support. Uh, Drew in Salt Sp on Salt Spring Island. Hi, Drew. Good afternoon, Judy. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we're talking about lack of media attention. Mm -hmm. I would like to go back to the early 1990s when foreign capital started to roll into BC from the Pacific Rim, specifically Hong Kong. Right. At that time, it was described as a trickle of $200 million a day coming into the province. That's a big Over trickle. the course of several years, we must assume that this ballooned to an enormous figure. Mm -hmm. Now, Glenn Clark started getting desperate uh, a little while ago, and he decided to have a foreign immigrant investors uh, tax program. He wanted them to declare their offshore assets by, I believe it was June last year, right. to tax them. Now, right. this was, of course, seen as highly discriminatory by the immigrant investors, right. and I agree with it. It is terrible. Now, um, what we don't realize, and what the media has not brought attention to, other than the crashing of the housing market in Vancouver as the immigrants in, uh, left their million-dollar mansions in Shaughnessy, and over 100 of them right. remain unsold now, Right. crashing the whole housing market. Right. But they also took their capital with them in response to Glenn Clark's trying to pick their pockets, and they invested it in America. Right. And that huge amount of money going out of Canada, going to America, raised the standard of the American dollar and dropped our dollar mm -hmm. down right across the country. Now, that money in mm -hmm. B.C. kept us afloat during other otherwise countries. recessive times the right. other parts of the country were experiencing. Right. And this must not be allowed. He must not be able to plunder anyone discriminatorily. Right. You know, the other thing is, BC's involvement in ischemia cellulose. Yeah. How are other mill owners going to view this when it is the government that is in charge of granting the annual allowable cut it's to these conflict. mills? It's a conflict. It yeah. is a terrible conflict, yeah. and of course now other mill owners are going to, when it comes time for them to have to upgrade their mills, yeah. they're going to say, well, why should I spend $10 million or $20 million upgrading yeah. it? I'll just tell the government that my community is going to become unemployed, and yeah. they will buy this rotten old dog of an upgraded mill right. off of me for more than it's worth, and I'll retire in another country. Well, I, uh, two excellent points, Drew. That, Thank you so much. Sorry, that's that's what's delaying the uh, Fletcher Challenge pulp mill strike. Uh, is you think the, so? Oh, yes. Because so all the, these uh, nine months, all these people watching right now who are yeah, on strike. The, there's the uh, a flexibility clause inside the Skeena Cellulose Agreement, which is a sweetheart special deal. And uh, the Fletcher Challenge guys have been on strike for nine months over the same issue. You're kidding. Yeah, and that's what it came up in the House finally uh, this week. It was raised last week up at a forest conference by a friend of mine up there. So, the but, but he's right to say that the government's in a conflict of interest. Oh, in very effect, much. They're the ones who control the access to the forest. Yeah. Uh, the, the first thing, the investment... The, the capital it's overstated. fund, the tax. It's overstated. Yeah, the, but the, the, thing, the thing is, though, is that, I mean, let's keep in mind when Clark was finance minister and, and Gunton was his deputy, I mean, they came up with some tax schemes uh, such as uh, an additional uh, property tax on high-value homes in Vancouver that, you know, led to a right. popular protest and whatnot. And, and, and the challenge for Clark and his advisors is to get out of that 1960s, 1970s mentality right. of, you know, tax the rich and jack up social spending to recognize that money flows far too easily around the world nowadays. Right. And if you do that, you're, you're, as you say, you're, you're going to get the finning plants relocating to Alberta sure. and other things. So the challenge for them is to come up with a tax scheme which actually encourages investment yeah. because that drives the jobs and drives the revenues that allow them to have 
adequate social programs. And, yeah, and to back up what the caller said, uh, certainly when I've been at receptions and there have been people who are from the Chinese Canadian community or the Indo-Canadian community, they say specifically that that tax is a reason that they're yeah. leaving and they are taking yeah. a lot of yeah. money with them. But the see. caller, I think, is overstating it when he says it caused the Canadian dollar to drop. They well, are from BC. Uh, I think um, there, was, there, there could be some money speculators. I don't think it would just be that. Yeah, but it, it would be a factor. No, well, anyway, we have big. to take a break. Yep. And we have lots of people on the phone. And we actually, if you really hurry in Victoria, there are two lines open and we will, I know, can you believe it? We'll be right back in two minutes. <laughs> Tiam She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Uh, life for him was always being hooked up to either a feeding tube or a dialysis machine. An organ donor registry has been introduced in BC that replaces all previous ways to indicate your wishes for organ donation. The donor has given Nicholas a very special gift, a chance at a normal, better quality life. To sign up, you must fill in a registration card and return it to the BC Transplant Society. This was a, a new road for all of us. It's a new beginning. Edgar and Miner have a whole new look. Now they're Edgar and Miner Carpet One. It's simple. More buying power means better savings. Low prices, quality carpet. We have got the best guarantees. 25-year wear warranty and a 15-year matte crush warranty. And a 60-day satisfaction guarantee. And at Edgar and Minor Carpet One in Victoria, make no payments and pay no interest for six months. Value, total value. Still the same Victoria tradition. Visit the new Edgar and Minor Carpet One on Bay. Hey, Commissioner McLeod, where are the rest of your men? You've got more men back there than I have in the whole of Western Canada. Yeah, but Sitting Bull held a war dance last night. General Terry, in Canada, Sitting Bull has kept the Queen's peace. He's agreed to meet with you. And spotted evil. That face doesn't look ready to come back to the States without a fight. Uh President Hayes says you will be received kindly and... The Grandmother's Medicine House is no place for lies. Not two more words. This country does not belong to you. We will stay here and keep the Grandmother's peace. She will let us raise our children. We do not want lies. These men, Walsh, McLeod, they're the first white men who never lied to us. I didn't know then that they'd be starved out of Canada and go back to the States. Walsh would resign over it. The sitting bull would be murdered. Today we're talking about BC politics. Our guests are John Twig from Twig's News Service and Mike Gagan, Michael Gagan, Michael Gagan Consulting. And uh, we're going straight back to the phones and then we'll talk about an issue raised by the Liberals about Crown Lands and some money and some jobs that have been lost there. But first Hi. let's talk to Lynn yes. in Powell River. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hi. I um, have a few things to say, um, a comment about, we live in a coastal community up here in Powell River. Mm -hmm. And when they had the major layoffs here just a while ago, and McMillan Bedell had said they were going to lay off 1,500 workers, the government's response to that was they were ready for it. You don't know how many families suffer for this. And it just seems that the government jobs, such as, you know, union right. type of things, the, there's an endless supply pocket for them, for all the shuffling of jobs and Right. creation of uh, government jobs, but the buck ends when you're on your own and you, as far as in the forestry. Right. And the Skeena, what Drew said about that, I feel very strongly about that. Sure. And I find that it's very hard looking at a government that can cut you off at the knees right. and they just supply themselves and go in debt. And we're still paying taxes to support it. I find right. it very hard. Okay, well, thank you, Lynn, and I can imagine in Pell River things are tough. She was talking about Drew from Salt Spring Island when she yeah, said, okay. "Yeah." So, uh, comments on the forest sector and the and the massive layoffs. <laughs> Pell River said massive layoffs, and then on the island, you've got the strike, and yeah. they've got all that money for skin and cellulose. Uh, she said coastal communities, and I wrote down you cluelet yesterday. I think oh, it was yeah. you had on. Even the MLA pronounces it wrong. It's not you cluelet. It's you cluelet. It's hard to say. 
Euclid. Yeah, Euclid, of course, see, I can, I can hardly say it. Yeah. Uh, they're having a problem, but the government even invested money there and then yeah. aren't even allowing them access to the stock. Yeah. I mean, the, the problem is, is the forest sector, particularly on the coast, is in deep, deep trouble. Um, you know, companies are losing $30 a cubic meter that they harvest, um, and the government has, has taken some steps to try and reduce the regulatory overload, which will bring costs down by about $5 a cubic meter, they say. But more than that, there the, are a lot of small and medium-sized businesses who can't get access to the forest. Yeah. Exactly, and that's and that's the fiber supply is is it's 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 not just a cyclical downturn in the forest sector that's causing economic problems. There are, there have been created some real structural problems with the industry. Right, and, and that's why I feel badly for people in yeah. communities like Powell River and Camel yeah. River. And yeah. they it could gonna, have the jobs. It's going to be a challenge for you know regardless of who's the government in five years' time and, 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 and with the Clark government now, it's going to be a challenge to, to try and solve this mess. Yeah, well, yeah. there are solutions out there, so it's don't a, yeah. despair. There that's are ways to solve this. That's the tragedy, is that there we could solutions. have so much of a bigger, healthier industry if it was properly done. No question. Yeah. Let's talk to Steve now in Nanaimo. Hi, Steve. Uh, good afternoon. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I want to bring up two points that the provincial government has got sort of up its sleeve in the, in the recent... Uh, my experience, I have not had my own BC Medical because, frankly, I haven't been able to afford it. I've been out of work for almost a year now. Wow. Haven't drawn anything from BC Medical. And about three weeks ago, I got a phone call from the Minister of Finance. It turns out you can't just stop paying BC Medical. You have to cancel yes. BC Medical. They've made it mandatory now. If they want $800 of my money oh, for two geez. years of BC Medical, which I have never drawn a penny from. Oh, jeez. Well, if, uh, sir, if you, uh, <coughs> if you did your income taxes and proved that you were low income, you can qualify yeah, for well, the Yeah, well, bottom, the bottom line is I've never drawn from it, and then they paid yeah. somebody to, to 7.30 at night yeah. to, wow. to give me a phone call. Wow. Uh, that, I got a red letter from ICBC for an old photo radar ticket, too, that's made me livid. <laughs> I've got one more point to bring, and that is the BC Central Credit Union. Yeah. Yes. As much as local as they like to claim they are, the uh, I didn't find its exact posting, but Dale Parker, the former head of the Workers' Compensation Board, is now hired by the BC Central Credit Union oh. in some sort of big economic role. Now, he's already destroyed one public institution. He's now being hired to run an institution of which centers on the banking industry, which is where mm -hmm. he came from. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't fella, know that. I think but, the fellow uh, has okay. his facts well, slightly well, wrong. I, well, let me just uh, let him know that as far as w his $800 bill from, uh, you should go down and see Dale Lovick. At, he was a local yeah, MLA. Go bug your MLA. <laughs> Seriously, take that into Dale Lovick's office. Yeah. And as John said, if you have copies of your income tax returns, take those too and show that you couldn't afford to pay, because that's ridiculous. Yeah. But there's the lag time and the bureaucracy. Oh, it doesn't matter. They can, terrible. you know what, the truth is that that's most MLAs, if they persist, can get things like yes, that fixed. That's true. And a lot of them just couldn't be bothered. So. Dale will probably be out driving his fancy truck well, somewhere. Well, anyway, I don't want to say that. I'm sure that he will help him. Hi, Dale. Um, <laughs> what were you going to say about Dale Parker? <laughs> uh, I think he's actually at the Financial Institutions Commission, which is a government agency. BC Central Credit Union is the... Um, would be well, regulated sort of, by for that. all of the credit unions. It's uh, totally different. Okay, but the financial uh, uh, institutions commission would is part regulate of the Ministry BC of Central, Finance, probably. Because uh, it's yes, but it yeah. regulates the trust companies and the life insurance and a whole bunch of others. Okay, we'll take one more call and then we'll talk about Crown Lands. So Barginder in Abbotsford, go ahead, please. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead, please. You have to uh, listen. Hello. Yes. Yeah, uh, you Dean. Yes. The Turn reason I gave down. you a call. Yes. I lived here in Abbotsford. I'm new to this country only about four and a half years ago. Right. And everybody told me this is the best place to live in. Right. And uh, my, one of my friends owns a U-Haul uh, dealership. And uh, the, every nine calls out of ten calls he receives is uh, the people want trucks for Alberta. They want to move to Alberta. Wow. And I know about 150 families who have moved from here to Alberta. Yeah. Right. So I just gave you a call if you can tell me what is our future here in uh, BC. Okay, well, that's a good question. Uh, it, yeah. Hopefully it'll start to turn around soon. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the Central Credit Union uh, announcement, I mean, it, it did reference in-migration that, that has plummeted. and uh, In-migration meaning people moving move, from move other places. Places to move to BC. Yeah. And, yes, I think as the job prospects dry up here and as word of that gets out, you know, people are looking... You know, yeah. people uh, who are looking for work, they're going to be looking at Alberta. Well, I, mean, the, I mean, there's other factors there as well. Uh, the Alberta, collapse of the Pacific economy, Pacific Rim yeah. economy. But also Alberta, I mean, the, 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 in terms of their housing costs, are significantly lower than yeah. Vancouver or Victoria. Yeah. So, I mean, there's other, there's other factors involved. But in terms of a turnaround, um, what 
any government that's in power has got to do has got to do things which are going to you know stimulate the economy and encourage investment and these sort of token little tax cuts are not going to cut it well i think yeah. the problem is and, and, and there's there's so many issues right now but one thing i will say to you Virginia, is that as soon as the pacific rim economies start to pick up again regardless of what our government does mm. our own entrepreneurs will be able to capitalize on mm. that yeah they mm. will john there's a the IMF I has pumped enough get, money in there. It's going to get worse here in BC until we get rid of this government. Well, I think that the government has a lot to do with it. But anyway, now we're, let's talk to uh, about the Crown Land issue. Yeah. Oh, we've only got a minute. Okay, quickly. The Crown Lands. Now, uh, to give the, the Liberals credit, Gordon Campbell says that there were 20,000 jobs lost and $1.3 billion because of mismanagement of Crown Lands. Who wants the, to take this first? The, they've delayed. Well, I did, but I guess I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you. You can analyze it. I'll tell you what happened. The... Uh, the uh, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. One of the problems, one of the big reasons that crown lands, uh, there has not been a sale of crown lands, is that is native land claims. For example, on Vancouver Island, there's a real shortage of crown land. The native bands that are in treaty negotiations hit the roof when they suddenly found out that the government had set up through the Worcester yeah. Land Holding Corporation this process to unload the land. Right. So the first thing they did was said, "You're not selling a parcel of land until our land claims are settled." And they're so not that, even And close. so everything has ground to a halt yeah. in terms of selling. In so it's not just staff layoffs, it's the treaty negotiations. And the NDP has deliberately put monkey wrenches into the property disposition approval system because... Property they, disposition being the crown lands? Yeah. Okay. So like, and it, even if you've got a, you know, two parties transferring a piece of property, they still need crown lands approval in many cases, such as for water licenses and things. Right. And the point problem I have with Campbell was, I was that's why I delayed, was how am I going to work this in? He wouldn't touch the native land claims aspect of it. He said, oh, it's strictly NDP incompetence, nothing to do with Delgamut. Well, well, of course it's Delgamut. It's I mean, e exactly. And furthermore, the real bad thing here is that the NDP might have us believe that they're forced by the court decisions to consider native land claims. That's not true. They still have free uh, government will to approve land transactions. And they may have and to do something later. It's a later political to that, decision though. to hold back those transfers. That's $1.3 billion worth of economic activity they have killed for political purposes. Okay, and we should let people know too that what we're talking about when we say Delgamuk is the decision that came out in December yeah. by the Supreme Court of Canada that there are originating so. Aboriginal rights to the land, and that has put a lot of things in a tailspin. Now, we're going to show information, yes, before we go to the break. If you'd like more information from John Twig, Twig's news service, phone and fax is 250-385-2042, and email is twignews at pacificcoast.net. And if you can afford to subscribe, I'd recommend <laughs> it because, you know, well, it's expensive, but you know what, John, yeah, yeah. you're the only one who reports half that yes, stuff. Yes, true. And if you'd that's like to get hold of Mike Gagan, it's Michael Gagan Consulting, Media and Government Relations Consulting, phone 250-474-6812, fax 250-474-6814, email is mgagan, try something simpler, Mike, <laughs> at coastnet.com. Geog Hegan. Geog with Reagan. Okay, and uh, we have to take a break. We'll be back with uh, your calls and comments after the break. When my friends raised their hands, I was envious of them because I didn't know the answer. And now I know how to work out the problems. Everybody's like, you better listen to him because he's pretty smart. At Sylvan Learning Center, 8 out of 10 students improve their math or reading skills by one full grade level in only five months. Call one of Vancouver Island's four Sylvan Learning Centers at 1-800-EDUCATE or check the white pages for the location nearest you. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Dinner time is my little precious hungry. <laughs> Nothing has more lives than a DuPont Stain Master carpet. So for beauty that lasts, insist on the quality of Stain Master. Come on, I'm innocent. I'm innocent, I tell you. I was framed. See the complete line of DuPont Stain Master carpets today at Horrigan's Carpets and Linos on Boleskine. Horrigan's, flooring Victorians with fabulous service for over 50 years. This is Norwalk, the furniture idea, Victoria's most original furniture store. Norwalk means custom-made furniture built for your lifestyle by a name you can trust. Take a look around. You'll find an affordable selection of styles in stock fabrics and leathers to suit any decor. This beautiful custom-made furniture is handcrafted with a lifetime warranty and delivered to you in about 35 days. You dream it, we build it. Norwalk, the furniture idea, as unique as you are.
the undersigned for themselves, to their heirs, property, and the signs. Has Here witness whereof the parties have set the their seals on for the themselves, themselves, their, their heirs, heirs, the undersigned, the undersigned, the undersigned, the undersigned, the undersigned their heirs, their heirs, and their signs. Legal speak. ICBC personal injury cases are filled with it. Fortunately, someone speaks your language, Taylor & Company. We offer these services and settle many claims out of court. Taylor & Company, guiding clients through the legal maze for 25 years. And we're going to go back to the phones in just a sec now. Very quickly, we want to, because we're always bashing away at everybody. Uh, some people have stood out in this session, especially from the Liberal Caucus. What would you like to say about that? Well, one of the names that comes to mind for me is Christy Clark. I think she's done a very credible job. She's done well, yeah. And uh, you were commenting on a couple of them as well. Well, I was noticing the only ones that caught my attention, and I, I'm one of those house watchers, because I can't get the info anywhere else other than your thing, is uh, I thought Ida Chong's done well. Yep. I thought Cindy Hawkins has done a good job. Mm. Um, Bonnie McKinnon, I mm. liked her child apprehension stuff, so yeah. it was interesting. Because April, there's April Sanders. I think April she's, Sanders she's is a great. very bright, very credible. And incredible. one of the things to the Liberal Caucus credit, some of the lesser known ones like John Wilson and John Van Dongen, they've given very strong speeches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, those are the people, unfortunately, that Campbell doesn't put forward, and yet they speak from the heart and they yeah. make sense. John Van Dongen's stuff on agriculture is very good. Um, Brenda in Surrey, go ahead, please. Yes, um, I hope I do this justice. I don't have all the information, but okay. um, there's a program out in Surrey right now for the integration of special needs kids in a preschool setting. Okay. And I, they've had a lot of air on, like, CNW, mm -hmm. and uh, they're heading over to Victoria because they have to lay off all the teachers. Oh, yeah. It's a high teacher-student ratio right. where your special needs kids that normally don't do very well in a preschool setting have a chance to go someplace, and they um, there's 16 students per class, right. four teachers, right. and they get a very positive early childhood experience with school. And these kids then go on to grade one or or kindergarten in your typical school setting. Okay, so why have they laid off the teachers? Okay, they they've lost their funding. Okay, this is a story that was on BCTV last night? Uh, it may have been. I didn't mm -hmm. see it. Okay. So it's called SAFE, it. and it's been in Surrey for 25 years. Okay, and they've lost their funding because of this amalgamation that's going on? I, see, uh, this is where I won't do them justice. I don't know all the information. Okay. All right. I just know that it's a program that has been working for 25 years. I'm sure that's what it is. Okay, well, yeah. thank you very much for raising that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad remember? that she did. Well, you know what she's talking about? The well, amalgamation of all the... Yeah, I, I, I don't have a lot to add to it, but I will say one of the things that challenge for, for any government that, that no government has got to is in terms of the education system is getting at the amount of bureaucracy and administration. We have superintendents in this province that are paid twice what a deputy minister or the premier of the province has made. And w you know, we have all kinds of administrators at these school boards who are paid six figure, well into the six figure salaries Excuse with me, very healthy yeah. buyout bonuses and clauses. And what happens is these administrators, they're in charge of the purse strings. They get the money from the province. Right. And whenever there are cutbacks or not enough of an increase, right. it's, it's groups like this that are the first, the students and the special needs kids and the English as a second language kids, that are the first to feel the cuts. Right. And what the challenge for government to do is to go in there okay. and get at these fat cat administrators. Okay, well, what I'd like Brenda to do, actually, is to ask them to give us some information. I have a feeling it has to do with the government's uh, amalgamation program, which was putting yes. a lot of excellent nonprofit societies out of business, and it was supposed to be on hold and under yeah. review. So and now let's talk to Bren and Souk. Hi, Bren. Hi, good afternoon, Judy. Yeah. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Judy, I'd like to remind the, uh, your guest to your immediate left um, that he shouldn't um, shake his finger at the um, government or uh, the political party. Okay. in power right now because as a matter of fact it was the um, free enterprise social credit government who brought the land treaties um, to protest into British Columbia Mr. Weisberger uh, first uh, minister Vanders and, and we Weisberg. have yeah let him finish okay. pardon yeah, go ahead Bren <laughs> yeah um, th uh, thank you Judy and it's because um, uh, the, the land treaty which is tied up massive chunks of land right. and holdings uh, in this province that we are suffering presently at the loss of 20,000 jobs and right. $1.3 billion of, inter of um, investment, be it uh, from Canadian or outside of this province. Okay, well, thank you very much for that, Bren. And 
I remember I was there. Van Der Zand there. in uh, Harrison Hot Springs announced that uh, the BC would go back into the treaty negotiations system. In 1990, roughly. Whenever it was, way back. Yeah. Now, I do want to say this, that um, at, at the PDA convention, which was not covered by the media either last weekend, uh, Herb George, who is the chief for the First Nations for the BC region, gave a presentation on the land claims and on Delgamuth. Mm -hmm. And it was so moving that many of the people were actually in tears. And I've heard him mm. speak before. Mm. And he received a standing ovation. But the, the, nut, the nut of that speech was that we have to settle this issue now because it's dragging on. It was 1990. It's been decades and decades yeah, of uncertainty. Is it the and province's duty or the federal? Well, it's, the, it's in the province's interest more than the federal because we're uh, the ones the who hold crown title. It. Yes, they should pay the cash, but we're the ones paying the cost with the jobs, 20,000 yep. jobs at least. Yep. Uh, I agree. I think uh, land claim prior, uh, has to remain a priority. The problem is, is that the Delgamook Supreme Court decision has raised native expectations so high yep. mm -hmm. that uh, I don't think a deal is reachable right now. Yep. I, I think that's why the Clark government is focusing in on NISCA because the leadership there has not substantially altered their, their bargaining position from the agreement in principle. I don't think yeah. it's going to work. But I think, I, I, you have to, have that's a, the pro, that's you the have to negotiate with all the bands or we, at least an we assembly. Are, we are paying the price for our, the arrogance yeah. of, the, of the colonial ancestors in, in British Columbia yeah. who basically felt that natives would either all have died off or right. be amalgamated yeah. by now. And that's why, with the exception of the Douglas treaties, they didn't sign treaties. Yeah. And, and, and the fact is, is that the longer we drag this out, the more expensive it is going to cost us both yeah. in terms of final settlement and economic loss. And, and B BC's social term, problems. And social there problems. BC's social terms issues. of union term put that problem over onto the feds. Yeah, I understand that, but it is in our interest because we're no. the last province that hasn't de dealt with this issue. But we do have to take a break, and we're no. way over time, and the director's mad, and the lines are jammed, okay. and we're back, and we're talking about BC politics. <laughs> Rainy day blues got you down, don't frown, girl. Just smile at the sun and cover girl seashells. She says, seashells. New shades back cover girl. Pink shells, sand castles, silver plums, and everything is sun kissed. So get what she says. Cover girl seashells. A fresh idea, a fresh face to the world. Easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Hi, can I take your order? Can I get a hamburger? Will that be all? Yeah, that's it. Thanks, come again. Can I take your order? Fish. Fish. All right. For healthy looking skin, wash with Noxzema. It helps scrub out oil and dirt, won't overstrip skin of its natural moisture like some soap can. Look, if you're free tonight, maybe we can go to a movie. I'm afraid I don't get off until 10. Noxzema girls get noticed. The precious produce on Vancouver Island. Craft Miracle Whip. The one with zip. <laughs> Anytime you see craft on a product, it's got to yeah. be good. We love, <laughs> love that, that Miracle, miracle whip. whip. Stove top stuffing. It's quick, easy, and tastes good. I've used it when I haven't got the, the time to roast, uh, you know, a chicken in the oven. Vancouver Island's homegrown food store. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, Circus Gaddy is coming to your town with 11 great dates on Vancouver Island. April 3rd and 4th in the Frank Crane Arena in Nanaimo. April 5th in the Comox Valley Sports Center. See over 100 circus stars. April 6th at the Port McNeil Regional Arena. Laugh with the lovable clowns. April 7th and 8th at the Cowichan Community Center in Duncan. Watch the daring men and women on the flying trapeze. And of course, April 9th to the 13th in the Archie Browning Sports Center and Esquimalt Recreation Center, Victoria. And we're talking to John Twig and Mike Gagan, and we're going to try to get as many calls in as possible. No, we're going to not, yeah. monopolize it. Yeah, yeah, no, you're going to get calls in. Mark from Coombs, it's your turn. Oh, thank you. Hi, go ahead. I was originally going to ask a forestry question, but I'd like to change the topic just a bit. It still uh, relates, um, talking about a fiber source. Right. Uh, I'm wondering, but with all, all this we're hearing about industrial hemp, mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't that provide a uh, much richer a uh, cheaper source of fiber, uh, better fiber for, for the pulp mills. Wouldn't that keep the pulp mills working 
all the time. We wouldn't be seeing layoffs due to shortages of lumber, et cetera. Wow. Um, and with that, yeah. um, that also brings up the whole cannabis question. Right. Our government is suffering from marijuana paranoia, <laughs> and that's what's keeping... Uh, I believe that's what's keeping hemp in the cannabis cage, if you will. Right. They're trying to control it. They don't know what, really what they're controlling. Uh, and if they just let it loose, we'd see a vast difference in the economy in the in the province. Okay. We'd well, see all kinds of work. All right. Um, I'm, I'm going to let the panel respond to that, Mark, because we're running a bit late. Uh, actually, okay, well, Corky Evans is working on the hemp thing. Yeah, yep. and it, uh, now, uh, in terms of, uh, Ministry of Force actually did do some initial look at hemp in terms, because this argument was being put forward, and the, in, their initial take on it is that it would not be a great advantage because you'd have to, you know, clear-cut areas and then put in a commercial crop, and that it turned out mm. to be not advantageous from a, uh, from a fiber producing okay, standpoint. Okay, that answer's too long. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> but... Agriculture Minister Corky Evans is advancing hemp. And it's yeah. growing in there Senate's this spot. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think if you're going to see hemp production, it will be on ALR land, not forestry land. That's true. Okay, yeah, that's true. Eliza from Vancouver, go ahead, please. Hi, Ms. Diabji. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. How are you doing? Oh, surviving. Yeah. Uh, health and housing issues for the disabled in British Columbia in general. Mm -hmm. Not good. The disabled, if they are forced to live on the gain, right. uh, generally receive a much, much reduced quality of medical service, right. and uh, the housing relative to disabled people is almost non-existent. The waiting lists for housing for disabled people who are on gain right. have tend to be four to seven years. Wow. I'm forced to live in the worst part of Vancouver, Skid Row, because of the fact that uh, I can't get a, an apartment anywhere else. I'm on immense numbers of waiting lists here, there, and everywhere. Right. But because of the fact that I'm disabled and I'm not, uh, not able to travel long distances in order to go to a physician, and I know this to be true in, in the cases of a, a large well. number of other disabled people as well. Right. They do not, we do not have access to proper medical care. Right. And why the physicians categorically refuse to make house calls periodically to people who cannot get out for themselves. Personally, I haven't been unable totally right. to get out of my apartment for three months now. Wow. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to stop you there. I, I, I'm going to take another call back to back on the same sure. issue. And uh, uh, thank you for sharing that. And now Ronald from Victoria, go ahead, please. Ronald? Okay, there's a Ronald from Victoria. All right, there so he might be gone. Now, that issue of housing, we heard so much of that when the NDP were in opposition. Yeah. That issue's gone one of the One of the problems that happened is just as the NDP was coming into power in 1991, the federal government was getting out of providing funding for housing. Right. And so you had, under the, under the SOCREDs, they, they put very little, if any, money into housing because it was matching funds from the feds in the province. So we were not getting low-income housing being built in this province. Then when the just as the government changes and the, gov and the NDP, to its credit, did make housing a priority, the feds were getting out of it. So, m so that greatly slowed the supply of housing. So the housing projects that you have seen going up around, you know, for example, the Victoria area, um, that's been largely done at, at the provincial government's expense. But it, there's, it's true that in East Vancouver, there are many poor oh. people and they just don't have anywhere to live. Exactly, and when they're disabled, yeah. just there, There's that. a tremendous need, but I think that legacy goes back to the SOCRED days and, and uh, I think it was criminal, the, the, okay. the lack of money they put into that. It's also the government doesn't want to uh, oh let the non-union sector in and build cheaper housing. They've got to all have union construction jobs and therefore it's, social housing is too expensive to build so they don't build it. Okay, well, we have to take a break, and we will be back with more of your calls and comments after this on whatever issue you would like to raise on BC Politics. amazingly clear. The digital PCS network. Be free. BC Tel Mobility.
It has been said that we are unusually ethical, unusually concerned with community and environment, that we are unusually generous. But then, if other financial institutions had grown up with this perspective all around them, then maybe they would see things the right way too. For all of your financial needs, call us today. Van City, it's right here. This is Glen Oak Ford on the old island highway, Remy. How do you like it? Look, it's got this everything that downtown has. New Ford cars and trucks, used cars and trucks. The same parts and service specials as downtown and a great sales staff. Glen Oak Ford in the Western communities and downtown on Douglas. Two full service dealerships with the same great prices and the same great service. Right, Remy? Right. For furniture, shop with confidence at Dodds because we won't be undersold. Dodds Furniture! Contemporary or classic, choose from world famous Van Gogh designs, now proudly made in BC. Manufactured with premium kiln dried hardwoods, select the fabric and style to match your lifestyle. An excellent investment in quality, Van Gogh designs at Dodds Furniture. Selection, prices, quality, guarantee, why go anywhere else? See you here, Pilgrim. I was just explaining the $8 million asterisk. Yeah, it's actually about 15. Fifteen million dollars. What yeah. does that mean? That well, it just did the fifteen they, million disappeared? They moved the threshold for financial institutions under the corporation capital tax up, so that two institutions that were getting close to paying it wouldn't have to pay. I don't want to know what that means. Hong Kong Bank of Canada, anymore. and I think the other one was BC Central. But anyway, it came out. The Vancouver Sun, to their credit, got this story, and the Hong Kong Bank would have paid eight billion dollars in corporation capital tax if they hadn't moved this threshold. Oh, I see. But what does it appear in the budget as? An, An asterisk. asterisk. Oh, I see. So and of course, the $8 million dwarfs some of these other moves that they've done for like the small business thing. Oh, I $3 see. $3 million. Okay, so it's like you would have paid tax. It's sort of the opposite of the PharmaCare deduction. Yeah, but <laughs> it's right. foregone tax revenue. Okay, Al in Surrey, go ahead, please. Yeah, good afternoon, Judy. Hi. Uh, my comment is just on uh, the news this morning about the provincial government and they're once again sticking their hands into the pockets of the casinos and the charities. Yes. Uh, as I recall, uh, uh, judges stated not long ago here, uh, no, no, Glenn, not allowed. But That's right. uh, Mr. Clark and his arrogance, as per usual, has once more decided uh, nobody knows best but him. I think it's about time uh, he got his head out of the sand and realized that when all said and done, he is still only a public civil servant. Right. We hired him, and come next election, we're going to fire him. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, and well, thanks and for that. Staff. And his staff. You mean the cabinet. <laughs> uh, what, now, how is it that, that this uh, announcement <laughs> well, on charity... Uh, uh, this charitable gaming that now they're taking over all the casinos. So now, as you said, it'll be unionized workers yeah. instead of volunteers, and uh, all those all those volunteers, all the nonprofit agencies, now yeah. have to apply. They'll have to kowtow, plus they'll have to share. Keith Baldry on BCTV brought this out at the new news. Uh, there'll be more up, more charity groups applying for the existing charity revenue pie. So and we don't know what their track record is, and they could be politically connected yeah. and getting money. And so Maybe the Nanaimo well, Commonwealth I mean, bingo will get their uh, money you know, back. I mean, and, and that's the thing, is that when you when you tie in the Nanaimo Commonwealth and the and the, the antics of Dave Stupich at all, I mean... There's not a lot of credibility. Not there. a lot of credibility. Okay. Now we have Sue from Salt Spring Island. Hi, Sue. Hi, I have a couple of things to say on education. I think you can knock a couple of years out of high school and out of elementary school have kids do apprenticeship training and and learn to be more self-supporting by the time they're about 16 so they can make more measured decisions about their futures and uh, possibly move away from their families and experience more. Um, on the disabled education thing, I think when I was sub-teaching in Surrey, I experienced a number of kids who were disabled who were being more or less put in spares and somewhat ignored, and right. I think that's a big factor. Okay. And, um, well, thank you for those thoughts on education. And, and, of course, we saw some education funding changes. There's promises there'll be a curriculum change. 
Yeah. When can we see a curriculum change? Or what you well, I was say? actually going to touch on the you know apprenticeship youth employment aspect. A lot of what's happened in terms of youth employment has been demographically driven over the last you know 20, 30, well actually going back to the to start of the post-war baby boom. I think what you're going to see in, in you know another 20 years time as the boomers die off and retire off uh, is that too long. Young people are going <laughs> to start. Long no, young, it's going to it's, it's going to stop from where kid. You know, people really can't get into the job market until their mid twenties. Where it's going to be starting going yeah. back to a situation where people can actually get gainful employment when they're twenty. Right, which is not the case right which now. Which is not the case now. Don't undermine okay. the BCTF, though. Oh yes. Well, that's a whole separate show. Uh, Joanne in Surrey, go ahead, please. Thank you. Very interesting show. Oh, good. Uh, after holding on here for 38 minutes. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> but Sorry. I would just like to comment. Um, I'm not happy with the NDP government, and I think the majority of people aren't happy with them. But what have we got um, as a, um, for a choice? We've got Gordon Campbell, who didn't City Hall uh, in Vancouver with a good track record either. So what have we got to vote for? And I'll hang up and listen. Oh, okay, thank well, you for calling. Now, the should Parksville I answer by that one? Let, yeah, me, let me answer, answer that, that one. one. <laughs> I've got a few ideas. Okay, well. Parksville by-election is going to be wonderful because uh, the Progressive Democratic Alliance, your husband's party, will and probably have admit, a strong And I should admit, I am candidate. a partisan. I continue yes, to work for the PDA uh, on my own time. Folks, okay. Judy told me she's not going to run there for I'm coming them. out of the closet. But uh, BC Reform is an, also an opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. And there's a, another... BC called, Reform is finished. Well, we'll see. This will test it. And uh, BC First Alliance, the pres the leader of the party, lives in Parksville. So uh, who knows? Never but, I get, but the caller's comment, again, what's mm -hmm. the overwhelming uh, problem is that the public does not feel well served by the government, does not feel well served yep. by the opposition. There are capable people within the government. There are capable people within the op uh, opposition. But, but as a whole, care. they feel it's none of the above. Well, and the, the problem, problem is, is, the is the for the third parties, be it the PDA, the Greens, or the Reforms, to, ha to be PDA, seen as a viable a al I can't let this go. There are only three <laughs> elected parties in the house. doesn't matter how many. Yeah, yeah but you start looking ones. at polls, right? <laughs> the I mean. PDA is the third party, even though they only have one elected <laughs> uh, member. Well, anyway. 9% versus We didn't 15. do home care workers and the Greens again. Oh, we'll be back. And yeah, it'll have okay. to be a whole show on home care workers. Thank you both yeah. for pitch hitting, and the Attorney General will be here on Tuesday. He'll be here next time now. We really did need to do this show anyway. We'll be back with closing comments and a preview of tomorrow's and Monday's show show after the break. <laughs> Down, don't frown, girl. Just smile at the sun and cover girl's seashells. She says, seashells. seashells. New shades back cover girl. Pink shells, sand castles, silver plums, and everything is sun kissed. So get what she says. Cover girl, seashells. A fresh idea, a fresh face to the world. Easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Hi, can I take your order? Can I get a hamburger? Will that be all? Yeah, that's it. Thanks, come again. Can I take your order? Fish. Fish. All right. For healthy looking skin, wash with Noxzema. It helps scrub out oil and dirt, won't overstrip skin if it's natural moisture like some soap can. Look, if you're free tonight, maybe we could go to a movie. I'm afraid I don't get off until 10. Noxzema girls get noticed. Since 1939, Old South has been searching for the perfect new blends for our concentrated 100% juices. Orange and cauliflower? Not in my lifetime. Corn? Ginger? Nah, thanks. Plusnip? Are you guys aliens? How about Swiss cheese? No, no, no. Oh, we need a break. Orange and peach? Orange, grape, and strawberry. New orange, peach, and orange, grape, strawberry. 100% juiced, 100% Old South. You guys are geniuses. <laughs> And coming up tomorrow, we're repeating the cloning show with Bishop Remy Drew and the head of genetics from UBC. Very interesting stuff. And then an update on the hepatitis C scandal and, of course, calls for compensation. The Attorney General 
Look at that. He'll be here on Tuesday. And then we'll tell you about the Canada Pension Plan, something a lot of people are concerned about and what the federal government's doing about that. And a reminder that Stolen from Our Embrace is the book that we'll be profiling. First time we've ever done this. We may not do it again, but we're doing two shows on this, April 22nd and 23rd. And the more people who can read it, the better. As I say, it's hard to read and even harder to put down. Very important issues. If you would like to participate in the Hepatitis C debate, you can fax us at 250 389-1226. Now, when it comes to BC politics, obviously I can't be objective on this, and my opinion is one that comes from about 14 years of dabbling in provincial politics. But it is true there are very good people on all sides of the house. However, right now, this province is a mess. And the worst part about it is the solutions are right there. It's not like we don't have the solutions. People could be employed, we could have prosperity, and we could have proper social services. That's what makes me angry. But beyond all that, have a great Easter weekend. And we'll see you tomorrow on tape and Monday in person. Only the strong survive. Never meant so much. It's here. The riveting drama, Prey. Tonight at 8 on Chick TV. Today on Canadian Living TV. Therapeutic massage for your baby. Making great impressions with rubber stamps. We're off to the Banff Spa. Jim Machino helps us fight the aging process. And more guilt-free goodies, banana spice cake. Hi, welcome to Canadian Living TV. I'm Samantha Houston. I have to tell you, I was blessed with a sleeping baby. My son Ford ate, pooped, and slept in four-hour intervals almost right away. Things you didn't want to know. Most